Shabbat Shalom, guys. It's been a week. <laughs> yeah. I've been on the phone with all my friends over there all week long, and it's been a bad week. Um, I'm going to read a psalm if you have your Bibles. I'm reading from Psalm 83. God, don't remain silent. Don't stay quiet. God, well, still, because here are your enemies causing an uproar. Those who hate you are raising their heads, craftily conspiring against your people, consulting together against those who you treasure. They say, come, let's wipe them out as a nation. Let the nation of Israel be remembered no more. With one mind they plot their schemes. The covenant they have made is against you. The tents of Edom and Ishmaelin, those are the Ishmaelites, Saudi Arabia. Gaval, Phoenicia, Amman, Amalek. Syria, Lebanon, Peleshet, the migratory people with those living in Saw, the Gaza Strip. Asher, Iraq, too, is allied with them to reinforce the descendants of Lot. Do to them as you did to Midian, to Sisra and Yavim. Those were the commanders of the army. At the Vadi Kishon, they were destroyed at Endor and became manure for the ground. Make their leaders like Oreb and Zev. Those were the princes of Midian. All their princes like Zavach and Zalmuna. Who said, let's take possession of God's meadows for ourselves. My God, make them like whirling dust, like chaff driven by the wind like fire burning up the forest, like a flame that sets the mountains ablaze, drive them away with your storm, terrify them with your tempest, fill their faces with shame so that they will seek your name, Adonai. I know some of you have been engrossed with that God is love. This is the American God, God is love. And um, God would never do anything to hurt us, but then when things go wrong in our life, the first thing we say is, God, what are you doing? With one side of your tongue, you tell everybody God is love. With another side of your tongue, you say, God, what are you doing? Why, why, why does my child have cancer? Why, why am I struggling? You've got one piece of God. One piece. Messiah is not coming back on a donkey. It's not the Christmas version. You're not going to be opening up gifts. He's coming on a war horse. The fire in his eyes and the sword in his mouth is not for his bride. It's against his enemies. That's why I share the gospel every day of my life. Every day of my life. Every day of my life. Christians aren't sharing the gospel anymore. It's extinct. Evangelism is extinct. We bring them to churches for coffee. The reason why I go after people is because I know when he comes back, it's too late. It's judgment. There's no hope. Don't, don't make up your own God. That's what it says. And until you become a weeper of souls, you'll never become a winner of souls. Do I, do I want uh, the people of Islam to just perish? Not in their sins, I don't. No, I witnessed to him. Anybody in here ever read the Quran through? Two people. You don't even know what it says. How are you going to talk to him? Do you know how it was compiled? You ever see one? You know how big it is? Half the size of our New Testament. It was compiled by men through oral traditions. Muhammad spoke to people, he had a vision. I had a vision. How do you know it's true? 
And after he gave all the oral traditions to all these different caliphs, they all came together, and it was all different. Everybody had a different story, so a central body came together and said, we're going to take this, we're not going to take this, we're going to throw out that, I'm going to add this. That's insanity. There's no literary authenticity for that document. Your Bible, we have 10,000, 10,000 New Testaments written by 10,000 different people, and they all agree. Do you know what kind of authenticity that is? It's incredible. If you just look into it, you don't even have to go to a library anymore. You have a computer. You just sit in your PJs. I used to go through the library, go through the Dewey Decimal System, sit there for hours researching. Now, just be careful what websites you go to. Before you get on Facebook, make sure you put your face in his book. So that everything you're reading on the internet or hearing aligns up with the Word of God. This is the only truth. Yeshua is the Word, and he didn't say he speaks truth. He says he is truth. I remember bringing a group, nice country boys from Georgia, and I tried to explain to them Islam, which, you know, sadly enough, they were 100% clueless about. Church just doesn't teach it. I don't know why. And I brought them to Israel the first time like 20 years ago, and I tried to explain to them about what their principles were and their tenets. And they just couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe the idea of infidels and what's in their PLO charters and what their objective is. It's not about the land. The Jews can move to Uganda. They'll kill them there. My people were killed everywhere. And so I called over a lukewarm, you know, guy. He doesn't go to a mosque. He doesn't really read his Quran much. Doesn't have a head covering. But he claims to be a Muslim. You know, there's a lot of Christians like that today. Lukewarm Muslim. I called him over, talking, having coffee. I said to him, this is what I said. I said, look, my friends are here from the United States. How do you feel about um, a terrorist going into a coffee shop and detonating himself and killing innocent women and children? He said, it's sad, but it has to be. And he was lukewarm. And they were like you, wow. Wow. You're fighting a spirit, man. We don't fight against, somewhere I read we don't fight against flesh and blood. Did you ever read that? God says to hate evil. I hate evil. Hate, detest. As much as I love God, that's how much I hate evil. The evil one loves when children are abducted. Loves. Loves innocent people being murdered. Loves. Loves things like cancer. Loves. That's what you're dealing with, a spirit. Don't call them crazy. When I was young, I was crazy. I ran with a crazy crew in the Bronx. We did crazy things. And they'd be like, Greg, you're crazy. That's crazy. Then there's mentally ill. We feed 168 homeless men, right? 95% of them are mentally ill. I was down there. They're mentally ill. You, can't, you can talk sometimes, but they're not going to hurt anybody. Every now and then a mentally ill person is, just goes off the rails. This is evil. This isn't crazy or mentally ill. There's no light in their eyes. Listen, Satan has demons. Demons are disembodied spirits. They need bodies to house. That's why Yeshua said if you kick out one, seven more are coming back to get back in that house. Your house is supposed to be filled with the light of the Lord. You're supposed to be a tabernacle. You're the succor of God. T Jesus said, tag, you're it. I'm out. He's gone. Right hand of the Father. You're here. You're legit his hands and feet. And you're supposed to have so much light that it's supposed to spill out everywhere you go. People should smell the Lord on you. And if you come in contact with anybody who is full of a demon, they should hate you without you even opening your mouth. 
Let them be ashamed. It takes shame to repent. Let them be ashamed and fearful forever. Yes, let them perish in disgrace. Let them know that you alone, whose name is Adonai, are the most high God over all the earth. It is not Krishna, it is not Buddha, and it is definitely not Allah. It is Yeshua. It's funny how people come out when you, they hear you're going to talk about prophecy. You know how many calls I got from friends this week? Rabbi, who's the Antichrist? I said, if I tell you, will it change your life? Will it change your walk? Will you become more obedient? Will you become kinder? Will you give more money away? Will you help more poor winner or new orphan? Will it? Because I'll tell you. I don't know, but I'll make it up, you know, just to get them to do those things. <laughs> Guys, things are coming to a head. I mean, my God. God never asked me what I want. I'm walking with them 34 years. I'm not bragging every day. 34 years. Some close than others, but every dang day. Ain't one day I took a vacation from hanging out with my father. Not one. And he's never asked me. But I told him the other day, if you should ask me, you know what I'm going to tell you because you know my thoughts before I even say it, but I'm just going to voice it. Bring Messiah back. Am I selfish? Yeah. Yeah, because if you would have came back September 23rd, 1989, I wouldn't be talking to you. So am I being a little selfish? Yeah. But I'm overwhelmed with what's going on. It ain't just in Israel. It's what's going on in your lives, my friends' lives around the world. You, you, do you know there's a major war going on in Ethiopia right now? Fox ain't going to report that. No, nope. major war. People are dying left and right. I'm hara guerrillas against the government. You know where it is? Where our congregations are. I was on the phone with him this week. There's a lot of wars going on. Tons. Not just Ukraine and Russia. Not just Israel and Hamas. It's coming to a head couldn't come sooner as far as I'm concerned. And don't panic. I know you got plans. Don't, you're not going to be flying around a cloud when he comes. We're going to be have bodies. Things are just going to start to spiral up. You know? You won't, you won't have so many things that need ectomies. Ooh, what's that? I should go see somebody about that. That could be. It's going to start to spiral up. Aren't you excited? All, all, all this that we've been through, all the hardship, the tears, the pain, the sorrow, the suffering, the unanswered questions, it's going to feel like a pinprick, literally, like a, like a pinprick when you see them. And it's all going to be but a fleeting memory that you won't think about ever again. Hallelujah. I'm convinced. I'm banking on it, and I can't wait. Fathers, always be glorified today. You be glorified today. Father, we totally trust you. A total, total trust. Whatever comes our way, we trust you. We trust you. We trust you, and only you. You're good in all you do. In everything, you, we don't deserve one iota of goodness. <laughs> Not even close. But yet you pour it out on your children. You're the best. Father, help me not go off the rails today. Help me to go in the direction you want me to go in. Please, Father, just borrow my body. I love you. Be blessed. Shabbat shalom, guys.